Praise the Lord. Thank you uh, for showing up today. Blessings on everyone. Happy Mother's Day. Uh, husbands, love your wives. Give them a hug. The mother of your kids. And uh, go hug your moms too. Isn't it neat that uh, you know God made Adam first and out of man comes woman. But then after that, every man comes out of the woman. <laughs> it's just in a wonderful way that God has to weave things together and to uh, put his stamp of love and sense of family and community together on the world. And uh, what a wonderful thing that uh, we have a, a day set aside to honor moms and to honor dads, too. And that's coming up soon enough. And I'm hoping that certainly by then we will be back together in person uh, sooner than later uh, so that we can uh, celebrate uh, together uh, what the Lord has done in our midst. Uh, there is power in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Wow, what a, what a wonderful song. I've always loved that song. And uh, I want us to go first to Philippians 2, 8 through 11. We'll put that up. And uh, that'll uh, bring out some of the reality of that song we were just singing and the power that there is in the name of Jesus. That's kind of my title. There's power in the name of Jesus. Let's just pray. Father, we just pray that your word would come alive, jumping off the internet and out of, out of the, off the pages uh, into our hearts and bring energy and zeal and we know the Lord of hosts will accomplish that. And we bless you and thank you that you make it alive for us. In Amen. Jesus' name we pray. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Um, so there's power in the name of Jesus that every believer has access to. And I want us to read these verses. Uh, and being found in appearance as a man, speaking of Jesus, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. For this reason also, God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow of those who are in heaven and earth and under the earth, and that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, at capital L, to the glory of God the Father. Praise his name. His name is above every other name. It's a name before whom every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess that he is Lord. And we, you and I, who are believers on Jesus, get to call on his name every day of our life. His name has dominion over all other powers. We've just read it. <laughs> Including the spirit of fear, worry, death, sickness, cancer, and even COVID-19. His name is over every kingdom and dominion in this age and even in the one to come. I'll tell you, if you're not walking with Jesus today, and reverencing his name, showing affection towards him for what he has done. Man, you are missing out on a whole lot. Well, even though Jesus, we have read and we admit and confess, has power over every um, other rule and dominion in this age, there are works that we, his church, are to perform, that we're to be involved in. We all can admit there's God's work and there's man's work. God wants his church, you and I, to co-labor with him. We've said this before. God usually won't do what man is supposed to do, and certainly <laughs> we cannot do what God does. Amen? 1 Corinthians 3.9 bears out a truth here that's relevant. 
We are God's fellow workers or co-laborers. I love that word, but fellow workers is a new American standard. You are God's field, God's building. We could use this analogy, you know, the farmer tills his field and then sows the seed. He prepares it. God usually doesn't do the tilling or the sowing of the seed unless the power of the wind throws the seed in a certain direction. We could say that's true. But let's face it, the orderly crops that come from the farm come from the farmer putting his back into the toil of working the soil. And God's job in that is to cause the growth. God works together with the farmer to bring a harvest. So let's just say it up front. There's a part that we do, and there's a part, of course, that God does. And the part that we do, we've been given the okay to do it, upper management's approval, to carry on in this world, in the highways and byways of our life, his authority. There's work for the church. It's delegated work. It's delegated authority. It's through the name of Jesus. I mean, perhaps our number one job for the church is to go and make disciples. Right? Isn't that maybe the number one priority, mission for the church? We're also instructed to heal cast out demons, all in Jesus' name. And I think much of the church, through the ages, has mistakenly thought that that was a work that's reserved for only the few, for the pastor, for the leaders, maybe those that are especially gifted. But, of course, we know at Believer's Chapel that this is a calling from God for all of us then none of us really are exempt. We are all a part of his church and a part of that call to preach the gospel. And I have some scriptures here I want to share that can back up what I'm saying very clearly. Four scriptures. First one would be Mark 16, 15 through 18, which Mary has up very, very much ready. Thank you so much. So, And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. He who has believed and has been baptized shall be saved. But he who has disbelieved shall be condemned. Mm. These signs will accompany those who have believed in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will pick up serpents. And if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. And they will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. It's interesting that in this first, uh, in, in these sets of scriptures here, the first sign of believers is they'll cast out devils. That's, that's true because they will do it in Jesus' name. They can do it in Jesus' name. He delegated that authority to us. So, believers, all, each one of us has authority over the devil in Jesus' name, in our own lives, in our own bodies, in our own families. All believers, I don't think he specified just certain ones, I think he specified all believers have the authority in their own lives to deal with evil, to deal with darkness. Our authority can be exercised outside of our personal sphere of influence, but only where we're invited. Hear me, only where we're invited. Where someone is willing to have us come in and help them. Another place that we can see where the name of Jesus has such power that has been delegated to us is James 4, 7. Submit therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Amen. amen. <laughs> Did I hear an amen out there? That's okay, I love it. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. The Bible would not tell us to do it if it were not true. Notice it does not say the devil will flee from Jesus at this particular moment. It's The operative word is you. In Jesus' name, through Jesus' power. Amen? We're his body. Jesus is my head. 
The only conditions that are really need to be met from this verse, at this point, looking at this verse, is that we submit to God. Amen. It's a good formula. Submit, resist. Submit, resist. I think resist tells us, shows us that we have something, an inability to stand against him. Let me show you what fleeing looks like. I wish I could run as fast as I could out of here. Running for my life. That's what the word means here, fleeing. It doesn't mean, oh, well, okay, we'll see. No, it means I'm getting out of here. I mean, the devil has to flee in the name of mighty Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, even when we lay hands on the sick, we're exercising our authority. Amen? Our God-given authority. Or when we lay hands on them, maybe to prophesy or something, you know, asking permission first. I think it's extremely uh, excellent evidence in the church. I mean, I believe in the laying on of hands. You know, authority to do that is ours whether we like it or not. Authority like that is ours whether we feel like it or not. Authority is, where, is there for you whether you believe it or not. Because we are God's fellow workers. The importance of revelation here is huge. <laughs> Personal revelation. That we catch that. You know, so much of this is caught. We have to teach it, but it's caught. It's in the experience. It's in the moment. And all of a sudden it dawns on us and we take action. We lay hands on the sick. And we will see them recover, the word says. I hold fast to the word. You know, I, I can't admit, I admit to you that I, I don't understand everything. But one thing I've always believed and I've always preached and lived out of from the very beginning of my salvation was the authority of the scriptures. The, the uh, perfect scriptures. God breathed. So we are told in several of these places to go and exercise his authority. We must learn, church, hear me, we must learn to leave the results up to God who has given us his instructions. They're his instructions. It's his plan. It's his word. We're his people. The responsibility for all the results is on him. So if I'm preaching to someone, which is just declaring the truth about Jesus in my life, if I'm telling them about the Lord Jesus Christ, I mean, you know, and I'll tell you, if there's any tendency for an individual, an unbeliever, to listen to us, God's probably opening their heart. Because God's present at every salvation and involved in every opening of every heart. He opened up Lydia's heart in Philippi. Remember? He opened up her heart, it says, to receive what Paul was talking. None of this is done on our own. None of us can do it in our own strength. I mean, we all got lots of good ideas. We all got some personal agenda. But let me tell you, it's a recipe for failure if we're not submitted properly. Submit to God, resist, is the formula. Another great scripture to go to that, you know, really gives glory and honor to Jesus and his powerful name that is delegated and given to us is 1 Peter 5, 8 through 9. It says, be of sober spirit, be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls, prowls about like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Someone once told me, an elder from another church, that, you know, that roaring lion, you know, at least he's pretty obvious. You know, lions, when they roar, shake the trees, you know. So it's pretty obvious to believer where he's prowling about. Amen? You see that? But resist him, it says. Peter's uh, saying the same things that James had just said. Amen? 
uh, resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being accomplished by your brethren who are in the world. You know, adversary here in this particular set of scriptures means legal opponent. We can't ignore that. We can't ignore him. It's really not an option. Hear me, church. We can't ignore him. It's not an option. We're told to resist him, and he will flee. That's our instruction. Even the ability to resist him, I think, shows that we have authority at some measure. We just have to know it. We have to know it. Amen? You know, I love verse 9. It really says a lot. It says, resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being accomplished by your friends in the world, your brothers. You know, these verses are just smacked full of the idea that we can do something about the enemy because we have authority in Jesus' name. And we can find sure consolation in the fact that uh, others are going through the same thing we are. And I don't know about you, but when I know I'm not alone, you know, that kind of helps me to get up out of the, out of the, the blues and kind of rise up a little bit, you know. When I know that Jake is fighting the good fight of faith, when I know that Terry's enduring unemployment, you know, and, and this one is going through this trial and trouble, you know, I mean, and, and, and they're hanging in there, and I'm seeing faith, and I'm seeing encouragement, and they're not walking down on their bellies, you know what I mean? I mean, that is encouraging, amen? You know, number 1,827, why it's good to belong to a local church. Amen? Yeah. yeah. You know, no one's exempt from bad stuff happening, good or bad. Um, you know, life happens. Some of the, I've heard some preachers say, life happens. You know, I think in the American church in the last number of years, we've probably felt pretty independent and strong. Uh, there might be some out there that think they don't need fellowship in a local church, that maybe they can do it on their own. But, you know, when a pandemic like this comes along and robs us of loved ones and puts fear like it has upon the nation and shuts down the largest economic expansion in the history of the world, you know, independence, self-sufficiency kind of starts to dwindle and get a little smaller, doesn't it? I'll tell you, kids, we need each other. We need each other more today than yesterday. Amen? Amen. I believe the Lord is saying many things through this pandemic, but one is this. Leave the worldly things you've put your trust in and give your heart more fully to the one who deserves your heart's attention. Didn't we sing that this morning? Didn't our worship leader even admonish us in that? Another place is Ephesians 4, 26 through 27 that I'd like to look at. It says, be angry and yet do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. Do not give the devil an opportunity. Do not give him place, some of the other translations say. He cannot unless you give him permission, either by assent or by default. Isn't that really what that scripture is? Isn't that, isn't that the inference from this scripture? Amen? This fact would only be true if we had authority over him. Everybody see that? This passage also reveals that anger, the anger of men, natural anger, if left unchecked, can be a door to allow the devil to come in and mess with your life. Amen? Now, there is righteous anger. Amen? But I'm talk we're not talking about that right at the moment. We're talking about just Somebody getting mad at somebody else. Take going to bed mad, waking up mad, and all of a sudden, seven freaking years later, 
they're still bitter towards that person. I'm telling you, man, that's the enemy getting in there, getting a foothold, robbing you and robbing. He's a robber. He's a thief. He's a murderer, thief, and deceiver from the very beginning, Jesus says. So all these four scriptures, the four authors, Jesus himself through Mark, James, Peter, and Paul, all are basically saying some of the same things about, about evil and, and about, um, you know, what can be done about it. You know, resisting, submitting to God, um, you know, exercising authority by laying hands on sick people, etc., with permission. I think it's some of the reason the American church is in trouble is that she hasn't, you know, she hasn't taken the step forward in this. She's kind of let things go by. The culture and the Lord of the culture is pressing in hard and people are buying into the lies of the devil and giving up and have often taken the easy way out. But we got to stand up sometime and we got to fight. Some would say, gee, it's too hard. You know, we can see in the history of the Old Testament people, Israel, many times the people love the comforts and the easiness, the easy way out of the culture more than the word of the Lord and the prophets, what they were saying. That's why they stoned the prophets. Because the prophets were calling them out and they were too comfortable. I think we need an awakening, don't we? Amen? Amen? And no awakening comes without repentance. You know, I want in my own life, I'll share my own life, I want to repent of my own complacency and my own laziness. Doesn't mean we don't need rest. We all need rest. It's <laughs> keeping a balance here. There's a time to rest. You know, I love old movies just like you do, probably. And right now, what else is there to watch but old movies, right? You know, a few good old ones. But I think, I, I, I'm calling to Believer's Chapel, I'm calling to the local church, anyone who has ears, it's time to rise up and take a little more responsibility. Yes, in the name of Jesus. You know, and stand up for things that you know are right. And help people. Amen? Help people. I mean, is it really that the main motive? I mean, why would we preach the gospel? Why would we want to see people healed? Why would we want to help people get out of, you know, demonically influenced situations, whether it's our own family or someone else next door to us? We want it because we want to help people. Amen? God's in the people business. We need a quickening. We need an awakening unto revival. I tell you, I would, my prayer is that the whole church, I've been praying this for weeks, would just fall over, head over heels in love again with Jesus. Just a, a, a healthy, hearty, new, you know, introduction of love into us for him. You know, he is due our affection. He is due our praise and our worship. I mean, he's God. He's the creator of God. He came and saved us from a horrible condemnation, a horrible end. Let me tell you, the plane that we're on is going to crash someday. It's good to appreciate the fact of what we are going to be saved from. It's going to end. And I'll tell you, I'm glad that the Lord has come into my life and delivered me from my sins and has given me the stamp of approval that through Christ, in Christ, I am in right standing with God today in the midst of the mistakes that I make <laughs> and the shortcomings that I have. <laughs> you know, that, that no man stands righteous before God in any way because we're all lawbreakers. It's only through the blood of Christ. It's only through that powerful name that we're saved. And then we're given the, the stamp of approval. And heaven's gates are opened wide. I'll tell you, when you're talking about eternity, an eternity of joy and peace, or an eternity of suffering and pain, where Jesus says there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, that puts things in perspective. And it gives me hope right here now in the present 
that what I'm looking forward to is better. Far better than even what I'm going through now. And God's good today. But I'll tell you, there is even better tomorrow for those that call on the name of the Lord. A couple of words of caution. I've got a few minutes left. I'm going to end so that we can get out and you can get to your responsibilities, Pastor Jay. A couple of things to stress. We don't, we don't exercise spiritual authority on the, path, on the behalf of others all alone. We must have a manifestation in our own life, in our own spirit, of the Spirit of God. Um, many fail here because they step out when they shouldn't. And, you know, I'm all for stepping out in faith. I, you know, I, I want to do that. And I have never found the Lord to not be faithful when I have stepped out in faith, say if I'm witnessing in a, in a public setting or something like that. There's been a few awkward moments. Come on, you know, there always are at times. Um, we need him desperately in this, though. We need him desperately. Um, but it's really important that we our prayer life is clean and clear, that we have a nice conduit open. You know, Jesus was always prayed up. His vault was filled. Is our vault full? It can be as we pray and minister to the Lord in our private times and get filled up with the Spirit. We need to have our prayer vault filled. That's how Jesus operated, and I think that's why he also saw so much success. So we need, we need that revelation. We need that nudging, that prompting from the Spirit. You know, we need to know that, 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 that there's something going on. Now, I'll tell you, we step out in faith, but we rely on the Lord. Amen? Another word of caution. Um, though we have authority in our own lives and, you know, in our families, um, you know, that's authority over demonic influence. Uh, it's authority over uh, uh, the manifestations of darkness. Uh, we don't always with other people. We don't because there's the human will involved. Um, we have got to let people walk away, leave them, if that's what they want. If people want to live in sin, they can. If they want to be free, they can. Amen? So we have to be wise there and know that, yes, I have authority, but, you know, you know I don't necessarily have authority in your house next door or in your life if you're an unbeliever and you don't want me there. We can't go around casting devils out everywhere we go. Amen? But if people want help, that's another matter entirely. Come on, wouldn't you want to be ready if your neighbor said, Pastor Dave, Pastor Jay, um, Heidi, could you come over with your husband and, and pray over my house and help me? My teenager is just in total rebellion. <laughs> You've probably been there, haven't you, Pastor Jay? You know, I mean, I've been there. I've been in situations like that. Now, I, whose name do I go in? What are they recognizing when they're inviting me in? Amen. It's the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And we go in in his name. And because we've been invited, because they're seeking for help, now all of a sudden the doors and windows are opened. And we can walk in in authority and exercise it there in that kind of a setting. When I minister to people on the street, and I've done a lot of street ministry over the years, not right at this particular moment with coronavirus quarantines, but um, when I have done it, I always ask people, ask them if I could pray for them. Ask them if I, even if I'm going to touch them or lay hands on them. Ask them if they would like to hear some good news. Could I share some good news with you? It's the best news that set my life free, you know? We must be invited, and folks must be willing. And isn't that really true at any level? No one was ever coerced into the kingdom of God, were they? Our Lord respects our free wills. It's sacred ground to him. 
even in the sinner. Amen? And that's why we're all called to repentance. To stop acting, thinking, and talking like you always used to. <laughs> and to start thinking, acting, and talking like God would think, act, and talk. Anyone, everyone must repent if they're going to see the kingdom of God. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I think I'm going to end there. There is more. But I think I'm going to end there. I'm going to ask that we would just bow our hearts for a few moments and we'll just pray to close out this service. Father God, I thank you so much for your word. And I thank you that you give me all the stuff that you've given me to help to bring it. And I just pray that, you know, it would really be fruitful like we prayed before the service and that it would really accomplish what you want, that none of it would return void, that, you know, any, all listeners, any listeners, they would all hear and be encouraged and strengthened and built up in the word to know that they know that in the name of Jesus, there is power. In the name of Jesus, there is authority. In the name of Jesus, there is a loving influence that we have that we don't have in our own selves. And that every believer out there has it. <laughs> what a wonderful, gracious, generous God. You are generous. So generous. <laughs> you are the giver of all good gifts. Bless your church. Build your church through this, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we praise you and give you glory. And we'll thank you. Amen. Have a great day, mothers and fathers and kids.